In this video, I'll record a couple of quick comments about a few other homework questions dealing with angular momentum. In question number 57, you have two ice skaters holding hands, rotating, making one revolution in 8.9 seconds. So one thing that you can find from that is you can find the angular velocity. One rotation is two pi radians. Divided by 8.9 seconds. So if you do two times pi divided by 8.9, you get that the angular speed is 0 0.70598 radians per second. They give you the masses of the two people. So we have 50 kilograms. We have 76 kilograms. And they're separated by 1.1 meters. And it asks for the angular momentum of the system about their center of mass. So when these ice skaters hold hands and rotate around, they rotate around their center of mass. That's something that's true of objects. If you have connected objects, they're going to rotate around the center of mass of the system. And so first, you have to calculate the position of the center of mass. So I'm going to let x equals 0 at 50 kilograms x equals 1.1 meters for the 76 kilogram object. So the position of the center of mass is m1x1 plus m2x2 divided by m total. So that's 50 times 0 plus 76 times 1.1 divided by 50 plus 76, the total mass. So that gives position of point six six three meters. So that's over halfway. It should be closer to the seventy six kilogram object. So the distance from the 50 kilogram object, since that's where we said x equals 0, it is 0.663. The distance from the 76 kilogram object is 1.1 minus that distance. So this distance, it is 0.4365. Angular momentum is rotational inertia times angular speed. We calculated the angular speed from what they gave us. What we need to calculate is the rotational inertia. So the rotational inertia is going to be m1 r1 squared plus m2 r2 squared, where r1 is the distance from the 50 kilogram object to the axis of rotation, and r2 is the distance from the 76 kilogram object to the axis of rotation. So r1 is the 0.663 meters, and R2 is the 0.4365 meters, so the distance of those objects to the center of mass. So the rotational inertia is going to be 50 times 0.663 squared plus 76 times 0.4365 squared. So that gives a rotational inertia of 36.459 kilogram meters squared. So the angular momentum of the system is going to be, again, the rotational inertia times the angular speed, that's 36.459 times the angular speed that we found at the very beginning of 0 0.70598. So that gives an angular momentum of 25.739 K. 
kilogram meters squared per second squared. Okay, for problem 62, they give you a mass of a child, they give you the radius of a merry-go-round, they give you the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round. It says that the merry-go-round rotates with an angular velocity of three radians per second. And the child is sitting at the edge of the merry-go-round. An important thing, the rotational inertia that they give, give you for the merry-go-round is only for the merry-go-round. So when the child is sitting at the edge of the merry-go-round, the total rotational inertia is the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round plus you need to add in the rotational inertia for the boy. So this is 79.9843 plus mr squared, the mass of the boy times the radius of the boy from the center. So the total rotational inertia is 79.9843 plus 54.4 times 1.3 meters squared. So that gives a total rotational inertia of 171.9203. So this allows you to calculate the initial angular momentum of the child and the mirror around together. So this problem would have been different if it was just the mirror around spinning and then the child dropped onto this. So you wouldn't have to worry about the rotational inertia of the boy at the beginning. But because the boy was on the merry-go-round as it was spinning, you needed to treat the total rotational inertia. And the rotational inertia they gave you was only for the merry-go-round by itself. So the initial rotational inertia, or the initial angular momentum, was going to be the initial rotational inertia of 171.92 times the angular speed that they give you of 3 radians per second. So that initial angular momentum it is 515.76 kilogram meters squared per second squared. At the end, the angular momentum is going to be the same value. So to calculate the rotational inertia afterwards, he walks in and he stops at 0.533 meters from the center. So now the new rotational inertia is 79.9843 plus hit his mass of 54.4 kilograms times 0.533 squared. So that gives a new rotational inertia that's smaller it's just 95.438 instead of 171. But the angular momentum has to be the same. This is just like the demonstration of pull standing on the platform with the weights sticking out to the side and then pulling those weights in. The angular momentum stayed the same. The rotational inertia decreased. So this means that the angular speed is going to have to be bigger. The final angular momentum is going to be 
times the final angular speed, but that still has to equal 515.76. So if I do 515.76 divided by my new rotational inertia, I get that this merry-go-round speeds up to 5.404 radians per second. So it's not quite twice as fast, but it does speed up. For this final problem, we have this rod that's supported and pivoted at its midpoint, but initially at rest. It has a mass of 2 meters, a length L. A piece of clay with a mass of M and a velocity V hits one end of the rod, sticks, and causes the clay rod system to spin about the pivot point O at the center of the rod. So viewed from above, they give you this scheme. So they show before they collide, at the time of the collision and after they collide. And after the collisions, the clay rod system have an angular velocity omega about the pivot. So this is fixed at its point. And so sometimes you might have this rod that's sitting there and it's free to move. So when this hits, this whole system is going to move horizontally as well as rotate. Um, this one, this is just a little, you know, paddle wheel type thing, the clay rod, the clay wad is going to hit this rod. It's going to just cause it to rotate around its pivot points and rotate around the axis um, with a certain angular velocity. So with respect to the pivot point O, what is the magnitude of the initial angular momentum of the piece of clay and the final moment of inertia of the clay rod system? So first of all, to find that initial angular momentum, we're finding the angular momentum about this point right here. And again, when we have something that's moving in a straight line, we want the angular momentum about a point. The form of the angular momentum equation that we look at is r perpendicular times mv. So this is moving along this line right here. And so r perpendicular is that distance from the point zero to the edge of the rod. It's half the length of the rod. So the rod has a length L. So the angular momentum is going to be L over two times the mass of the clay times the speed of the clay. So this is the initial angular momentum. The final rotational inertia of the clay rod system is the rotational inertia of the rod plus the rotational inertia of the clay. So it, we're looking at diagram B. So the rotational inertia of a long uniform rod rotating around its center is one half it's one twelfth times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. One twelfth ml squared. But we don't just have the rod, we also have the clay. So we have to have the mass of the clay times the distance from the clay to the axis of rotation. So I'm going to call that r squared. Again, we have 1 12th, the mass of the rod is 2m, the length of the rod is L, the mass of the clay is m, that distance that we use for the rotational inertia for the clay is L over 2 squared, and you can simplify that. For 64, find the final angular speed of the rod clay system. The initial angular momentum has to equal the final angular momentum. The initial angular momentum, we calculated it above. The final angular momentum is going to be the final rotational inertia that we just calculated 
times this final angular speed, which we're trying to find. So I'll leave it to you to go through and solve for those values, but that's what this question is asking. This is a pretty common thing to have something that's moving in a straight line and it hits something and starts rotating. But that thing moving in a straight line does have angular momentum about a point. As long as it's not moving directly towards that point, it does have angular momentum about that point. So these are the types of problems. These are extremely common problems. You should look at these. There was some multiple choice questions that dealt with this on the homework. And there are definitely parts of free response questions that happen every once in a while that deal with these types of problems.